it was good to get on the court today and uh, play against uh, one of the top two teams in this league, rightfully so, and to play them in a meaningful game. You know, they were hoping that uh, they could get a piece of the regular season title, and they played like it. They played very aggressive. They played real strong basketball. But I told our guys, you know, uh, I'm so proud of the way they've come together down the stretch. And that's when you want to be playing your best basketball, early March. And so right now, I think everybody would say that the Aztecs are playing their best basketball leading into the conference tournament. We have one more big game left with the regular season champ, uh, Nevada. And uh, they're that for a reason. They're talented, they're well coached, and uh, they're, ve they're very good. And so we're going to enjoy this win like crazy tonight and tomorrow when we give the guys a day off. And then we're going to get back to work on Thursday and get a game plan ready for Saturday's home finale, senior night with Nevada. And I'm so happy to have Malik on the floor for his senior night. You know, I think we are all uh, surprised when that story came out on Friday morning. And no one more surprised than Malik. And he kept his chin up. He was truthful. He told us he was innocent, proclaimed his innocence, and then went out and proved his innocence. And uh, I want to thank John David Wicker and Andy Humes for helping us uh, with all the compliance and the internal investigation. We pushed through quickly. We're in contact with the NCAA. And uh, Malik breathed a big sigh of relief uh, when I told him this afternoon he would be back in the lineup and playing for the Aztecs. You never know how important some, something is until it's taken away from you. And so Malik might have missed one game. I'm sure it felt like a month to him. And we're grateful to have him back and on the floor and looking forward to his senior night with Trey Kell and Cameron Rooks on Saturday here in VA House. Malik, what were the emotions for you at the start of the game? Uh, you know, early game jitters as usual, and it's times two, you know, but uh, definitely excited as well and just itching to, to get out there and play. Got off to a pretty good start. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's feeling that good. Help, that kind of helped things. Yeah, it definitely, it definitely got me got me warmed up kind of quick. You know, got me got uh, a good feeling for the game flow and you know, and just staying aggressive. So, you know, it panned out. So, Malik, I, you know, when this broke, there were a whole lot of names out there. You weren't the only one, um, but a lot of other schools immediately declared their guys eligible. You and Texas were the ones that decided we were going to really look at this. Was it frustrating at all to, to see other guys playing over the weekend, or did you understand what what the reasons were behind, uh, behind that? No, I was definitely more understanding than anything, you know, because you know, just to protect the, the the brand and the the name of the school, you know, I don't want to. It's a lot selfish if I would have, you know, been in Coach Dutch. Like, come on, come on, what's going on? But um, it's it's definitely. Um, good feeling to be back out there and get all that stuff out the way. Be back playing again and, you know, finish out the season the right way. I told John David when we talked on the phone that, you know, obviously it's nice to have Malik out there because our chances are enhanced to winning. But I said the winning's not the important thing to me in regards to Malik. It's clearing his name. It's letting everybody know that this is an outstanding young man that was falsely accused of something. And many people rush to judgment like they have a tendency to do when we withheld him from a game. Everybody wanted to say suspended. And I said at the time, suspension sounds like he's done something wrong. We withheld him from a game. Malik trusted in the coaching staff, the administration, and this university. And uh, we're all grateful for the way this worked out and that Malik Pope will be able to enjoy uh, one of the finest senior nights hopefully we'll ever see here in Viejas on Saturday. Did, did that cross your mind that you might not be able to play on senior night? Uh, and, ha and, and how badly do you, now that you know you have missed a game, do you really look forward to that? Um, it did cross my mind, but not, not necessarily to a point where I was dwelling about it because I knew everything would be, you know, taken care of eventually, and I'll be good to go. So you know, for the most part, it was just more of a let's just get this process completed and. You know, let's get to it. But um, yeah, 
I was a little nervous at, at first, like, what, what's going on? But I was, it was good. We're good money. How much are you looking forward to, to that moment? What moment is that? Senior night. How much am I looking forward? Yeah, how much are you looking forward to that moment where you walk out of it? Oh, four years worth. Oh, I've been here since freshman year, struggling. I can't wait for that. And you know, it's a great feeling, you know, especially with the, the group of guys we got and coaching staff. So I'm excited and, you know, can't wait, especially with Nevada on the opposite side. That's going to be great. Let's get this building full for that last game. These, Indeed. This team deserves that. These kids deserve that. And our seniors deserve that. So let's get the students in the seats. Let's get every person that has a season ticket to either use it or give it away. But let's fill this building for the home <coughs> finale on Saturday. This has been a great team this year and deserves the, the support of the fans like they have most every game. I know these 8 o'clock games are tough, but uh, our fans show up no matter what time it is, and they give us great support, and that energy helps us on our home floor. Speaking of uh, support, Malik, talk about uh, what it felt like coming out when you were announced the starting lineup and the crowd just giving you all that love. That was a beautiful feeling, you know, knowing, well, I already knew that because SD is just, you know, amazing, but just knowing that they had my back regardless was just a great, a great, great sense of, uh, of urgency getting into the game. You know, it kind of was motivating, gave me another chip on my shoulder, just knowing like, all right, like, let's get to it. Like, so, you know, for the most part, it was great. Uh, I really enjoyed it and I enjoyed getting that dub. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Coach, in the, in the um, second half, they shot 30%, and that's obviously obviously been your kind of problem area, second half shooting by the opponent. What changed tonight, and, and uh, how are you able to do that? Our defense is getting better, and it's been getting better for the last six or seven games. And uh, everyone knows Chandler Hutchinson had 40-plus at their place. But I think the biggest thing is, and if you, if you really study it, uh, Malik has become much better post defender. We've never asked him to be uh, uh, the low post defender. You know, usually he had Valentine or he had Zylan or he had Skyler, and he played the stretch four defender, and he could switch ball screens and stay out there. And so his development as a help defender to, to assist on a ball screen and stop Hutchinson, and it's a two-man job. So it was either Trey and Malik or Matt and Malik that were dealing with all those ball screens. And I think we all saw that Malik's help defense has grown exponentially as the season's gone on. And that's just from hard work and something new, playing a new position. And, you know, I talked to, I don't know how many scouts we had here tonight, 34 scouts, and I talked to one of them that uh, Malik is not going to be a center in the NBA, but having to play down there is going to serve him well in the future, having to do that. And so whatever level of professional basketball Malik plays next year, I know he doesn't want to be down there, but having played down there and done it uh, without complaining, just trying to get better has helped this team defensively, and he's a big reason we're playing better right now defensively. Was there anything else you did differently on, on Hutchinson? Jalen said, talked about how you were forcing the middle. We had a couple different things. We tried to send him, you know, send the side ball screens, you know, down the sideline, and Malik's got to communicate that. He determines which way it goes, so he's either calling left or down and, and he's or through he's he and Trey and Matt are communicating the whole time out there and the communication's critical because they both have to be on the same page if one's helping on the wrong side and he goes the other way it's a problem and so they did a great job with their communication and dictating where they wanted to send him and then helping uh, helping tremendously on him and uh, he's still a wonderful player I think he still ended up with 18 points but uh, that looks a heck of a lot better than 46 or whatever he scored the last time Dutch, would you have thought you could win against Boise State going one for 16 from threes? Thank goodness we made that one. <laughs> so no, one, no, one for 16 is not going to beat a lot of people. But we took care of the ball. We only had eight turnovers. They had 17. You know, so we did other things. You know, we, we, you know, we. I think people would say we got a lot of free throws tonight. We attacked to the basket. We were very aggressive attacking the basket. So. We took, I thought the threes we took were open. Maybe in the first half we rushed a couple early ones. But then I think as the game settled in, I think every three we took was wide open. They, we just couldn't get them to fall. But uh, we still found ways to win, and that's what good teams do. They find ways to win when they're not shooting well. well you, got, you got really good kind of short jumper scoring tonight. 
from both Jalen and Malik, right? I mean, you yeah, when they zoned us, we, they were giving us the foul line jump shot. So we made, the first time they played us, we made a lot of those and shot them out of the zone. And this time they extended a little bit and we ended up shooting that mid-range jump shot. And then later in the game, they came up to take that away. And I think we drove them a couple times from that area and got to the foul line. So our, our post did a good job playing in that high post area against the zone all game. Trey sort of continued this trend of the new Trey post ankle injury where he doesn't shoot a lot, but has a lot of assists, plays good defense, is more of a distributor. Is that something you decided? Or is that something he just sort of fell into and started doing? How did that come about? I, that, it, I would say he didn't fall into it. That's my vision for Trey. When you get a senior, you set him up in ball screens and then he makes the right play. So if the right play is the shot, like he hit the pull-up jump shot, that's great. If the right play is the lob to dunk to Malik, that's great. And so I don't think Trey goes into any ball screen saying, this is what I'm going to do. That's what makes him special. He, he takes what the defense gives him. And so a lot of the younger guys, they might say, well, I'm getting a ball screen. I'm going to shoot it this time. And Trey always seems to make the right play. And so he determines that more than anybody. But that's, that's what my vision for Trey was as a senior, that we'd put him in ball screens, and he'd find people or he'd score, and he's doing both right now.